NBA Media Day, where everyone is even record-wise, everyone has hope. 23 teams said hello to the press on Monday, players and reporters living as one. And we'll see how that relationship works come December. <laughs> Just give it some time. But for now, it's all about love as we welcome you to our Media Day recap on NBA TV. Alongside my guy, Dennis Scott, and we welcome in former Bulls and Clippers head coach Vinny Del Negro with us. Good to see both of you. Vinny, thanks for being here. Thank you. Media Day. Give me the coach and player perspective on Media Day. Vinny, if you would, as coach. Well, Media Day is very important to the organization, to the team, but as a coach, you want to kind of surround your guys with as less attention as you can, <laughs> especially after Media Day. So it's a little bit different as a player, but guys are excited, ready to get going, have to do all of your responsibility things for the organization. But as a coach, you want to limit that. There's so much attention, especially if you're one of the top teams now, so much media attention, limit that as much as you can throughout the season. As a player, it's two sides. When you're a young team, you embrace all the media because you're trying to get the basketball world to understand who you are as a young team. But the coach's point, once you start winning, you get deep into the playoffs, you want to be focused on the task at hand to have a great season. All right, we start at the top right now. These are heady times for the Miami Heat and their team leader, LeBron James. The Heat trying to join the Celtics, Lakers, and Bulls as the only teams to win three straight championships. Our Brent Berry caught up with the MVP, ready to up his game again along with his right-hand man, Dwayne Wade, and Miami's great unknown, Greg Oden. Well, LeBron, uh, another championship banner on opening night here for you guys will be hung in the rafters. Um, but at any point this summer, I got to ask you, did you think about how close you guys were to not having that one? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've watched game six um, probably a dozen times. You know, and, um, you know, you get to a point where we was in that game, we was like, wow. You know, the season is ending, you know, the wrong way again, you know, and, um, you, know, you know, absolutely. We thought we'd get to a point where we wouldn't have another banner. The, the idea about LeBron James becoming a better basketball player, I don't think a lot of people think that that's possible. But in your mind, you know it is. You know there are things that as a player you want to be better at and improve upon. But right now it's all minutia for you. What is that minutia for you going into this year? Oh, man, uh, I, I do try to improve, and, uh, and I can say that I've improved once again in this offseason um, on every, every aspect of my game, from shooting to posting up to rebounding to leading. And um, you know, I'm here for, for this team. I'm here to do everything, and uh, I, love that. I love that challenge. Yeah, the biggest thing I focus on, I had two goals. It's on one, to be pain-free coming back into the season, and two, just to be strong. You know, the game that I have, um, you know, I have to be able to you know, withstand hits, um, to be able to take – um, the pounding, et cetera. So I wanted to really focus on on that, and I think me and Tim did a good job of it. I still, you know, got you know a little time to go before the season starts, before I get to where I want to get to. But I'm happy where I am today. Well, last summer, um, you know, I just the doctors told me not to watch any basketball, get away from working out, get away from the game. Next thing I know, I found myself watching NBA TV six hours a day. And this is what I wanted to do ever since I was a little kid. And uh, my family and friends know I wanted to get back out there and give it another shot. And I'm here. Greg, it really yeah, is. Yeah, big fella. We nice. appreciate that, form. big fella. Yeah. Thank you That's the right much. channel. Yeah, absolutely. Locked on it. As for LeBron James, well, the guy's been a rock. I mean, look at him. He answers the bell. And there's an historic aspect to what we are seeing in terms of his play and obviously what the team is doing. But, Dennis, as we hear from LeBron and heard from him, there's a real sense of self about who he is. And maybe that's the biggest X factor in carrying them to another possible title. It really is, Vince, because we talk about role players and guys coming off the bench being prepared to play. And to hear LeBron James say, I want to make sure everyone on my team from 1 to 15 feels important. Because so many plays in the game halfway through the season, you're not feeling well, you don't feel like playing. And sometimes a role player come off the bench, knock down two or three threes, and win the ball game for you. So I think it's huge for LeBron James' leadership to make the rest of his team feel important. Well, I think it's very important because LeBron understands the importance of Odin and Beasley, the additions there. He wants to make them feel very good. Those are guys that he's going to need to get through the Eastern Conference this year because the Eastern Conference has gotten better. As long as you have LeBron, all things are possible no in terms of where you've been and where you're going. Well, LeBron is the measuring stick now. You know, LeBron knows in the first quarter I can come in, take over the game, set the tone, make sure LeBron, uh, excuse me, D-Wade and Bosh and other guys touch the ball because in the fourth quarter, I know I can take this game over. Have to.
That's what the superstars do. They take the game over in the fourth quarter. Dwayne Wade struggling a little bit the first few rounds of the playoffs. Look at his numbers in the finals. He stepped his game up. They got another championship. And one of the things you can appreciate, Eric Spolster getting the contract no extension. Question. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, not given the credit maybe deserved, but maybe now he is in this No round. question. He handles all those personalities, all the egos. He's kind of led, led that group very, very successfully, and it's a much harder job than people give him credit for. He's done an excellent job with them. He deserves the extension. Across the country, well, there sits one of the great franchises in league history and one of the season's great question marks. There's no timetable for Kobe Bryant's return from a torn left Achilles, but Kobe in midseason form as far as confidence and expectations. Our Rick Fox caught up with him back on Saturday. 100% no preseason? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I, it's tough to put a kind of put a wind on this thing. It's not like a, a typical injury where I can measure. You know, if you have a knee injury, you kind of measure what's it going to be. This thing has been tough to gauge. Well, well, gauging it, when you look at RG3, you look at Derrick Rose, some of their communications of timeline, does that affect your decision? No, not really. You know, I just uh, I just do my own thing and just uh, really just measure, you know, how the tendon is feeling, how the strength is feeling, and more importantly, the recovery of it. You know, the tendon is what it is at this point. It's set. We're very happy with where it is. So now it's just a matter of kind of the muscle endurance and then the recovery after. Well, that brings us to, I guess, the training camp, which you get to have uh, with Mike D'Antoni. How much uh, involvement do you plan to have as you continue to rehab? Oh, a lot of involvement. It's, it's um it's always a process of communication and trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to play best? What's going to be the best um, form of basketball, best forms of attack? And through that, build some versatility into the club. And so every guy is kind of, you know, held accountable and uh, is thinking individually about the betterment of the group. Expectations for the season? Well, it's championship always. Always. And, you know, the only way you get this is by putting one foot in front of the other, though. But it's, it's important that my guys know um, what we're going after. It isn't to prove, you know, whoever wrong that we're supposed to be a 12 seed. We don't care about that. You know, we want to win in June. How's the uh, right Achilles doing? The left gets all the attention. Yeah, you know what? The right one gets a little jealous. <laughs> gets a little jealous, and all of a sudden, I wake up in the morning, and that thing, you know, it's kind of like nipping at me a little bit. Like, hey, don't forget about me, too. You know, you are. You know, 35 years old, man, going on 18 years in the league. So uh, I haven't had to just focus on the left Achilles. I had to focus on the entire body as well. Well, I like seeing uh, the return to the connection with you and Powell, uh, two championships together. Your thoughts on him returning this year to being that anchor in the paint? I think it's great. I mean, it's, it's amazing um, how we've kind of lost sight of that. I mean, after winning back-to-back -back championships and Andrew's emergence, kind of pushed Powell to playing outside of his role right. and then, you know, Dwight coming here, pushed him outside of his role, and it's like, well, Powell's not playing the same way. Well, we're not using him the same way. Right. So now it's a chance for him to kind of get back to doing what he does best. And as Kobe alluded to there at the end, Gasol will return to his more comfortable five spot. He, he likes it there, but like Kobe, he's dealing with health issues, procedures on both his knees, and I would imagine Vinny taking it easy here in, uh, in training camp, easing his way to the October 29th opener versus the Clippers. What does that mean, though, to have Powell in a more comfortable position given who the Lakers are today? Well, he has to perform at an all-star level. There's no question about it. The health of the team last year, they had to deal with a lot of injuries. Paul's a key factor for them now. They brought in Chris Kamen. They have some other players. But bottom line is Gasol's got to get back to playing at an all-star type level for the Lakers. If somehow Powell can get that love for the game as you can see guys play when they run up and down the floor you haven't seen it say the last year or so if he gets that back obviously we don't know when Kobe's coming back but let's be honest I'm not sure there's enough on that bench to really help those guys get back to what Kobe's talking about I like the fact that his leadership you want to play in June but Kobe I'm not sure you have enough help to get to June right I love the drive too and coming back from the Achilles but that's really a different animal, Dennis, is it yeah. not injury-wise? It, it really has. From talking to different people that has gone through the injury, Dominique Wilkins, who's a good friend of mine, we've talked about it. He's got back. Obviously, their games are different, but it's hard to come back from an Achilles and to get back to playing like he once was. Mm. Chauncey just came, just went through it last couple seasons. I mean, you come back a little early, the calf hurts, the back hurts, you pull the groin, whatever. But Kobe said it. There's no timetable mm -hmm. because the Achilles is a different injury. He can't go practice and work out for six hours. He has to give it time, let those tendons heal so he comes back at full strength. Look, Vinny, you said this. You don't, you don't doubt Kobe. You don't no, you dare don't him doubt to him. do things. No. But I think the Black Mamba may have found something to slow him down. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right. Coming up, much more of the Media Day recap. 
Same city, L.A., but a very different outlook for Chris Paul and the Clippers. Meanwhile, Darren Williams welcoming his new teammates in Brooklyn. You may have heard of the ex-Boston crew. What a season for the Brooklyn Nets a year ago. Avery Johnson gone after a 14-14 start. P.J. took over. Fourth in the East. Lost to the Bulls in the first round of the playoffs. Jason Kidd from the Knicks to the bench as head coach. They acquire Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Jason Terry via trade with the Celtics. Our Mike Fratello on hand to meet the new guys. Kevin, 19 years coming up now in the NBA. You've enjoyed so much success, yet you had to make a big decision. Stay in Boston, six years in Boston, just six great years, or come to Brooklyn and see what this is all about. What was the thought process? Tough one, Mike, to be honest. Um, to be somewhere, you know, your family's already set, and to just, you know, have change be available, uh, it was tough. But, um, you know, looking at everything and being able to, you know, have, obviously make everything work for all parties, uh, it worked out. So I'm glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. You come in with a team loaded with talent, loaded with depth. If you had the culture of the Boston Celtics, so how hard a transition will this be? Well, hopefully it'll be uh, a little easier than we project because a lot of us here are our friends. Uh, when we're not on the court, I've known Joe since his rookie year. I've known Darren. He's played in charity games with me. And so uh, these guys are making the transition so much easier, just helping us fit in like we're part of the family. And, uh, you know, right now it's all about just coming together, getting to know one another and developing our chemistry. Well, I think one of the biggest obstacles is time, you know, being able to get these guys together. You know, we don't have enough time. Uh, you know, we don't have trade camp, but we have to come together quickly um, to get out of the gates. Uh, you know, we don't want to come out slow. But I think one is time. You know, we have some older players, so we have to find, you know, guys that can eat up some of the time when those guys aren't playing. All right, the Brooklyn Nets, in terms of most career all-star selections, opening day lineups, this is since 1970, and only behind the Boston Celtics of a few seasons ago. And speaking of all-stars, Darren Williams. Let's start with him. Uh, already some MVP talk. With this crew, DZ, what has to change or not change for him to make this all work with this new veteran group? Well, the obvious is stay healthy all year long. See if you can get at least 80, if not 82 games in. Then secondly, get back to playing like that point guard you played like a few years ago where we talked about Chris Paul, is it Darren Ware, or is it Derrick Rose? You have to get back in that conversation, and I think all the talent around you will fall suit. Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, they're ready to win another championship. They're not worried about being the top 10 in scoring or the top five in rebounding. They want to be in the top one or two teams at the end of the year to have an opportunity to win a championship. Darren Williams has to get back to playing that kind of basketball. The great players don't always make the shot, but they make the right play. His job right now is to lead this group. They have plenty of options, but keeping Joe happy, keeping Paul happy, keeping Lopez happy, keeping Garnett happy. They have a lot of weapons, but the bottom line is he has to be the leader. He has to lead that team on the court and let everybody know the ball's going to be in his hands. He's going to make the play, whether it's to score it or make the, ma make the playmaking decision. All right, Vinny, uh, small window, big payroll. Uh, is this thing going to work? If so, why with Brooklyn now, now making a run? Well, Jason said it a little bit. Time is very important. And Jason's going to have to do a good job managing the season, managing his practice time. He's got some older guys that can't be on their legs a lot, so they're going to have to be very focused on what they want to do, how they want to play. They're going to have to create their identity early, figure out the system they want that works offensively, but almost more important, defensively. Garnett will, back, Garnett will be in the back kind of telling people where to go, but Jason will have a very good sounding board with Lawrence Frank as he matures in that coaching seat. And I think Jason has to figure out how can I instill confidence into my bench early in the year to coach's point so Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce aren't playing 38, 40 minutes, 42 minutes early in the season. So Reggie Evans, Andrew Blatch, guys like that have to come in ready to play on the defensive end. Offensively, they're going to be fine to your point. If Darren's pushing it, causing havoc, being in attack mode, he's willing to share the basketball. But defensively, if those other two guys can show up, I think it helps out. Think his about cause. It. Jason Terry off the bench, been there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. You're going to make big shots. Kirilenko, 
Got to have to worry right, about him right, as right. long he's that play. Right. Andre Blatch can really score the ball. Reggie Evans can get you 20 rebounds in a game per minute. Mm -hmm. Rebound guy as good as there is in the league. So they have other players to take some minutes off Garnett. Lopez is young. Darren Williams is young. Joe Johnson's in his prime. They got plenty of guys. Pierce and Garnett are the key. Well, literally, uh, that is uh, Jason Kidd's right-hand man, uh, <laughs> Lawrence Funder, uh, Lawrence Frank, rather, right. uh, who is seated next to him in summer league and will be in the course of the year. But the question is, during the course of a game. I mean, in-game coaching, when is it going to really be on kids' lap right away? And there's nothing like it, is there? Well, there's nothing like it because in a 20-second timeout, by the time you get the guys over here, that timeout's quick. Mm -hmm. It's different in basketball than baseball and football. You don't have a lot of time. So the preparation is key. Luckily, he has veteran players. He has top-level players. Lawrence will help him. He'll dictate some re responsibilities to some other coaching staff members as Jason kind of gets more comfortable in that seat. His job will be to manage the game, manage the minutes, manage the season with his time management of practice and during the game. And for a first-time coach, he has that flexibility where he can play inside out or he can push the pace with Darren Williams with the basketball. So I think Brooke Lopez, if he stays healthy as well, going inside early takes a lot of pressure off your wing guys if he gets it going. I like the fact that Pierce and J.R. Smith have already gone at it a little bit about who owns oh, the New York. <laughs> so they're setting the tone for what could be That's a, right. a really a fun one. season. All right, still to come, the San Antonio Spurs. Were they scarred by what happened in game six of the NBA Finals? Still plenty of talent. That man, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, they reset for the season. Can they bounce back and do it again? What a terrific matchup. Two teams with championship pedigree. Parker on the drive, nearly lost it, still dribbling. Parker with two to shoot. Just gets it off the time. And he banks it in. Oh, what a block from James. Oh, my goodness. It's up the three. Puts it in. Danny Green does it again. Now has an NBA Finals record. Three out of three for the quarter. Season to end tonight. Duncan comes to the rim and blocks it. What a play by Tim. Now LeBron gonna have to hurry up. Turns the corner, gets bumped. This jump shot. Got it, LeBron. The Miami Heat have won the 2013 NBA title. The San Antonio Spurs, such a proud group, but that first ever NBA Finals loss was a painful one. And now this steadiest of franchises tries to turn the page on thoughts of what could have been. Greg Popovich and Tony Parker looking forward with the occasional peek over their shoulders, talking with Andrew Monaco. Pop, as we come into this season, this new season, how much do you revisit the NBA Finals and then move on from that? Well, we will look at it very, very closely. You know, our coaches have already done that, and we'll do it with the team before we start the new year. And we've done that every year. We always start the next year with the ending of the previous year. Uh, to see if we can learn anything and, and add it to the program and then move on. How comforting is it to know you've got the big three coming back once again? Well, it's, it's been a, <laughs> a source of comfort for a long time. <laughs> uh, I don't have the same comfort on the bench now. You know, everybody left, uh, but I got a great crew coming in. Uh, a lot of experience uh, in Jim Boyle, and uh, he'll teach me a lot, and uh, it'll just feel weird for a while, uh, but we'll get used to it. Yeah, a little bit different because obviously it's the first time that, that we lose in the finals and uh, obviously it was a tough one. But I think for me it was um, kind of quick because I had uh, to play with the national team three weeks after. So I think that was good therapy for me to just play basketball and think about something else. Where you are now and where you were when you first came in is light years. I think Pop said last year, look, I don't even talk to Tony anymore. Quite different from when you first joined this team. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. When I first arrived, you know, it was a lot of up and downs and Pop screaming at me, but now, you know, it's, uh, our relationship is like so special and I know exactly, you know, what he wants, you know, on the court and we just connected now. So it just shows, you know, where I came from and all the improvements. We try to get better every year and uh, try to be better, a better leader mm -hmm. every year. Well, that was a heartbreaking loss in the finals, no doubt about that. But here is the plus side. And we saw a real coming out party for the likes of Danny Green, Kawhi Leonard. Splitter is re-signed, though Splitter did not have a great finals, but he's very important to what they are trying to do. 
I look at Kawhi Leonard starting with him, Dennis, and I always say he was born to be a Spur. That's right. And he is the next wave of greatness for this team. Well, talking to Spurs people, you have high maintenance guys, you have low maintenance guys. Kyrie, uh, excuse me, Kawhi is no maintenance. <laughs> when you have a young guy like that that's willing to play both ends of the floor, show up early, leave late, get in the weight room, do all the little stuff that coaches don't have to tell you, you feel good knowing that you have someone on the wing that, hey, he's coming to play every night. No question. The thing with the Spurs is they have continuity. They have chemistry. They have consistency because of that. People say they're getting old. They were fourth last year in points scored at 103. They had the sixth quickest pace in the league. They want to get up and down the court. Popo managed the season. They got three-point shooters, and you always got the big Tim Duncan up, up front who controls the pain for them. Right. Mano Ginobili, and during the course of the finals, there was talk, or at least he approached the possibility of retiring, but they re-sign him. Why is this a big move uh, for the Spurs, Vinny? I think he's one of Pop's favorite players. He's an all-time spur type of guy. Um, he knows he didn't play his best last year. Um, they wanted to keep this group together because Tim's getting a little bit older, no question. They won 58 games. They, they could have won game right. six and won their fifth title. I mean, they're that close. Why break it up? Ginobili can play better. He can get healthy. Parker is Parker. He's just very difficult to contain. And whenever you have Duncan, you always have a chance. 58 wins is 58 wins. Well, for me, it's fun once again. Pop, when you won your first championships, it was inside out with Timmy. Yep. Now, to your point, being yep. six in pace is because Tony Parker pushes the basketball. Well, the rest of the West is going to be tough. Oh, so it's right. going to, the challenge is out there for the Spurs tough. to try to get back. Uh, now, the L.A. Clippers, one of the teams challenging in the West. And a look at their year in review. Uh, best record in franchise history. Coming off that, uh, remember that win streak in December? Yeah, I remember. Straight games? I remember. Amazing. <laughs> They finished fourth in the West, but lost to the Grizzlies in the first round of the playoffs. Vinny Del Negro is with us now. Doc Rivers is their head coach. Laker Rick Fox reached out to the Clippers, a Laker in huh? Clipperland. <laughs> uh, Doc Rivers, though, has been their championship level basketball. You guys have been working this out together already for a few weeks. Uh, what, it, what tone is being set from Doc? Um, I think the, the biggest tone is being set by Doc is, um, you know, first of all, respect. You know, I mean, we gotta respect each other, one another, respect the game. But uh, it's all about what we what we do, what we put out. You know, so we gonna have to come in, work hard. He expects a lot from obviously the team, but especially from us three. So it's all about the process. When you look out there, uh, on the landscape in the West, you guys uh, finished first in the division, uh, Pacific, fourth in the Western Conference. Where's the improvement gonna come to get uh, to the top there? I think our biggest area of improvement is defensively. I think that uh, you know we have a lot of a lot of guys that can score the ball, and we have some guys that can that can take over late in games. So um, you know, defensively, if we're tough and we're, we're a team that you know it's tough to come in and, and score, and we can get stops when we need them, then I think that's going to be what takes us to our next level. You're here now, a 56-win season last year for this team, going from average to good, but good to great is hard. What has to happen? Well, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You know that. You've been on winners, and you understand that. I think. Um, Everyone's happy, uh, you know, when you're good, right. you know, but to become great, you have to do things different uh, and you have to be willing to sacrifice. And uh, if we're willing to do that, we're going to be really good. And if we're not, we're just going to win a lot of games like we did last year. I'll get to those jerseys in a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, the back in blue sleeve jerseys. But first, the CP3 effect, and it's a, a big effect, that's for sure. And he's re signed with the Clippers, undisputed leader of this team. Vinny, I don't have to tell you uh, how important he is to this club. But leaving there and stepping back, we know what the Clippers are. Where can they be vulnerable? Where do they have to get better? Well, they needed, they needed some shooting, perimeter shooting. They got it with J.J. Redick. They got it with Antoine Jameson and By Byron Mullins, two guys that are pick-and-pop guys. Uh, and you can play Mullins in the fourth quarter, get their free throw percentage up. They have to do that, shoot the three a little bit better, defend the three a little bit better. But right now, they have to find their identity. They got a lot of new pieces. Darren Collison, team, people aren't talking a lot about. He's another guy that has to back up. Bledsoe did a great job for us last season, explosive guard. So a lot of it will be res uh, responsibility for Collison. So they just got to come together as a team and find out what direction Chris and Blake mm -hmm. are going to lead them. Yeah, and Dennis, we always talk about teams, and particularly players. You got to get better. You have to grow in the league. There's, there's room for growth for Blake Griffin as well. There's a lot of room for Blake Griffin, which I think he will improve and continue to work on his game. Uh, he's shown us last year he can improve with the free throw line. Uh, obviously, we'd like to see him post up a little bit more, add a few more wrinkles to his post-up game. 
which I think he will, but I think it's the overall work ethic and to say, you know what, in the fourth quarter, Chris, give me the ball. Yeah. Give me the ball. Let me put us on our, my back, get to the free throw line, and carry us through a game. I think that's something we didn't see a lot of last year. Maybe this year he takes more of a leadership role to take his game to another level. I think as the season went on last year, he became more comfortable in his jump shot. You saw it at the free throw line. And now as he becomes more comfortable at the line, Hill won't bother him as much to get fouled in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. He can make big plays. Blake has all the tools. He's a hard worker. Um, he's only getting better. He's only been in the league a few years. And Chris is a great leader and going to lead them right down the path again. How they come together as a team at both ends with the identity they, they, uh, they put forth will be the key for him. And part of the identity is the Back in Blue campaign, and that's where the jerseys come in. I, I don't know how fierce they look in these powder blue jerseys, Dennis. <laughs> I don't I, know if I'd be scared. I reserve judgment on those. Um, huh. Yeah. Well, I hope DeAndre, I hope you can block some more shots and, <laughs> and be ready to knock down some shots, big fella. <laughs> well, if you win, I guess you can wear anything. That's Our right. real training camp back on NBA TV Thursday, 11 a.m., live from Duke University, where the Nets are going to hold their camp. And then Friday at 1 p.m., we'll bring you an inside look at uh, Doc Rivers' new team, the Clippers, as they set up in San Diego. We'll be there. More ahead, including star power from Dallas. The Mavs reshuffle again, but Dirk remains their rock. What day is it? Media day. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Media Day, also a great day to check out Twitter. And this Instagram photo we got from the Bucks uh, featuring John Henson, Giannis Tedekumpo, and Larry Sanders. They are the long arms of the lane. That is a, a lot of long arms. Yes, it is. Get that shot out of here. <laughs> How about more Media Day? Let's whip around the East, where it's a full season for Rudy Gay this year in Toronto. It's very different because, you know, I, I honestly don't know what to expect, you know, out of the camp. But also, um, I'm excited. I'm excited to get to actually have a camp with my teammates and, you know, just see what we can become this year. We're a different team this year, you know. Um, obviously, the makeup's a little different. And also, you know, we're we coming in with a different mindset. We have to start off good, you know, with, with that terrible start, you know, with, you know, you race that, you have a playoff team. So, um, I think everybody here knows how important it is to start off well here. And, uh, you know, we can't give those games away early. This team got, a, um, like, a, a nice set of young guys, young talent. And then we got some veteran guys here, too. You got Ben Gordon, who have proved himself in this league. Ramon Session, who also proved himself. Brandon Haywood, who don't want a title with Dallas. You know, then one thing I could bring to the table, I don't think, you know, these guys have played with a guy who demand a double team night in and night out. And, you know, I just think that with that, what I bring could really help us spend that game and get better. You know, Gerald Henderson who getting better every year, and I think this is going to be his breakout year in my opinion. So it's just, you know, when I looked at the roster before I was committed here, I just knew that, you know, we had a nice group of guys who were along with me, it could, you know, it could really take it to the next level. For my history, you know, it, I wasn't supposed to be here, um, but because I worked hard and I believe I could be here, I am here. So it's always a blessing, you know, waking up and realizing that, you know, your your dreams have come true. You know, you're playing in the NBA, but um, like I've been saying to a lot of people, the draft is over, you know, and it's, you know, it's time to go out and um, the, the ball's on the court now. It's time to, to to go out there and, you know, go to war every night with your teammates and, you know, win basketball games. Victor Oladipo. DZ, we were in Orlando mm -hmm. for Summer League. Not sure about him. We were sure once we left Summer League, he's going to do big things for them. Well, I heard he wasn't a great outside shooter. I heard he was 6'1". He's really 6'4". He's too <laughs> small. But after talking to him and understanding who he is as a player, I appreciate him. He wants to play defense. I said, where did you get this from? I want to score the basketball in the easiest way for me is go take the ball <laughs> from my man to go score. So I thought it was very impressive for a young guy coming into the league already thinking in two ways instead of one way. I'm not sure if he's a point guard. Right but you want him on the court. He does all the intangibles, guards, steals, tough kid can rebound, tip ins, different things. He's only going to get better. They need more talent with him. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see how he runs a team as a point guard, but he needs more weapons around him. A fly will help. They got some young players there that can help him, but they're still in a transition phase. Uh, Vinny, briefly, uh, Rudy Gay, full season now with Toronto. The, the Raptors finished strong at the end of their season, so they think maybe they're on the cusp. Uh, you got Lowry, DeRozan, Valanchunas. Had a, a nice uh, FIBA league for uh, Lithuania. When Rudy Gay got there, they took a big jump. 
then they kind of kind of dwindled off a little bit. He's that good of a player. I like Kyle Lowry a lot. Terrence Ross has to improve, but Rudy Gay and Valence Yunus obviously are their big key. They got some pieces there to work with. Now they just have to put it together. First time Rudy Gay will be in a training camp with them. They start fresh this year. Um, and obviously they have some weapons, um, but they, they got a, some of the younger players like Rudy and, and Kyle have to be more consistent and play at a higher level for them. Well, they're one of the teams that they believe knocking on the door. We've assembled some of them as we take a look at the longest playoff drought. And atop that list, the Timberwolves. Nine years, almost a decade without making postseason. Uh, DZ, real quick, any of these teams, uh, they're thirsty. Anybody going to get a, a ice water? I think Josh Smith gives the, the Pistons a chance to fight for a spot. I think Wall and Bradley Beal, the backcourt is, is solid. Now the question, can Okafor and Nene be healthy enough to help them out? All right, let's go back to the Wolves now. And uh, our Larry Smith was patrolling arena links, and he talked with a now healthy Kevin Love about that team outlook. How tough has it been for you? Uh, as you said, you were out, and before that, Rubio was out, but now you're all together. Um, did you do anything different in the offseason to kind of prepare for this year? Uh, I said it earlier. We're here at Media Day. I said it earlier. I just try to get uh, uh, better at being lucky, I guess. So I just had a, a string of bad luck last year. Uh, the whole team did as well. So I think more than anything, we're just excited to get back on the court and look forward. 16th season for you. Uh, you've done so much uh, NBA championship, all the titles and different accolades. What keeps you motivated at, at this point in your career? Well, I think after the championship, I had uh, two rough years. You know, the lockout year was tough for me. I wasn't really, uh, it took me a while to get going. And then last year, I needed, uh, I needed knee surgery. And then I never really felt like I was back to my normal self until late in the season. So I feel like this, this is a good season for me, a big season for me. I feel motivated. Uh, I feel uh, I need to prove something that I can still play uh, consistent ball. You know, I think I felt I had some uh, some good good games last year here and there, but it, it wasn't really consistent enough. So this year I put a lot of work in the summer again. I've been working out since May, uh, and hopefully it shows on the court once uh, once we start get going. What is it like now entering a season, uh, having had that kind of success, and now expecting even more? I mean. It's, it's, it's put a lot on you, you know. It, it, we got that winning taste, so we know what it's like to win. And um, you know, we want to get there. We want to win a championship. And we was close last year. Um, I think we was missing a couple pieces. And you know, the organization did a great job this summer in bringing in, you know, a couple players, bringing in Mike Miller especially um, to help open up the court. And, you know, let us play some in the paint. So I think it was great moves this summer, and um, I think we got a great team. Zebo, known as? First name 20, last name 10. That, that's correct. Kevin Love uh, broke that shooting hand yeah. a couple of times. Uh, Minnesota, a very interesting team. And again, a team with pieces, maybe knocking on the door. Maybe the drought is over. I, I think that graphic we just showed, they, they should be in that mix. They have a playoff mm -hmm. chance, no question about it. Resign and Pekovic, Kevin mm. Love's healthy, is mm. good to forward in the league. Yeah. They bring in Corey Brewer. They sign Kevin Martin. They have, obviously, Ricky Rubio, who's coming back now. He's going to have, a, I think, a breakout year. Last year with the knee, was kind of testing it. I think now he's healthy. His game's improved. They have more depth. Rick Adelman's back, a very, very experienced coach. I like Minnesota's lineup. They just got to stay healthy. Stay healthy, and anytime you have Ruby Vision on the floor, you have guys willing to run the floor. Yeah. I think that's the fun part about when you watch uh, Minnesota since he's been there. When he gets that ball, you see all the guys run the floor. That's a fun brand of basketball. Guys want to play for that. And now Corey Brewer likes to run the floor. Now you have a shooter in Kevin Martin on the wing. Now things get interesting in Minnesota. They should be optimistic. They should yes. be optimistic. Uh, uh, yes. Up there in Minnesota. All right, coming up, the hometown kid. He's gone. Jay Smoove leaving the anxiety of Atlanta, revving his motor in Detroit. Part of a talented front court, but what about guard play for the Pistons? Falling like rain. Here's Josh in transition. Tough shot to hit it. And he is on it tonight, folks. Off the jump. Oh, my goodness. Throw it down, big fella. He is the only man in NBA history to average over 15.7 boards, three assists, two blocks, and one steal in his career. That, that's unbelievable. Say what you will about Jay Smoove. When the guy is right, he can fill up a stat sheet. And a change of scenery may be a good thing for Josh Smith and the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Josh is now a Detroit Piston to the tune of four years, $56 million. Our Jared Greenberg caught up with Josh at Piston Media Day. Well, he was one of the 
most talked about free agents on the market this past summer, Josh Smith, now a member of the Detroit Pistons. Still weird for you to say something other than the Atlanta, Haw Atlanta Hawks? Uh, I'm getting familiar with the word Detroit Pistons. Um, you know, I've been there so long, uh, you know, you know, Atlanta Hawks has been a part of me for nine years, and, and uh, now it's a uh, new scenery, uh, new teammates, and I'm just excited about the, uh, the move and the transition, and uh, I know it's going to be beneficial for my career. Well, why are you getting used to saying Detroit Pistons? I know one phrase that you're sick and tired of hearing already, yeah. and that's floor spacing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Greg Monroe, Andre Drummond, a big guy standing behind the camera. Big boy. Are, are the three of you guys going to be able to work together offensively and defensively? Most definitely. I mean, uh, you know, people don't get get a chance to see uh, the work that we put in before training camp starts, and uh, we had we had some opportunities to uh, play up and down, and uh, we didn't have a problem with it then, and I don't think we have a problem with it now. We have, uh, you know, me and my row are a good uh, mid range uh, jump shooters. Uh, you know, uh, Drum is a, a freak athlete uh, that that can control the paint uh, with his defense and uh, be able to um, you know score the ball uh, when needed down down low and uh, you know floor spacing uh, shouldn't be a problem with us. Uh, we work we work hard on our games on it um, off the court and so uh, you know being able to knock down jump shots when, when open uh, all you gotta do is take take some time and uh, you know it has to do with a lot of confidence. We talked about the numbers with Josh, what makes him unique. The 17-7 and four club is an exclusive one. He belongs with James, Kevin Sticks, and Mr. George. Uh, DZ, you watched it for a long time here in Atlanta. Why is this a, a good fit in Detroit for Josh? Well, I think it's a new scenery and a chance to prove that I'm an all-star. The last two or three years, Josh's numbers have been there, say, for half of the season. The other half, people say, well, where'd you go, Josh? I think now being around Joe Dumars once, a winner, and someone he could talk to as a mentor to say, this is how you have to play each night. And then can Mo Cheeks find an offense that suits him? Because the second thing people said, he took too many three-point shots. And I know that's something that's been kind of poking at Josh that I don't know if you want to be a three-point shooter. I know you want to expand your range a little bit, but your bread and butter is blocking shots, rebounding, and being a difference on that side of the floor. Greg Monroe, Greg Monroe can take pressure off him. Drummond's a good hands, big guy, young, only about 20 years old. And they have some veteran leadership with Chauncey Billups. Brandon Jennings going to come in, take some pressure off those guys. But at the end of the day, Josh's leadership, Brandon Jennings, and Drummond, and also Monroe are the future of that team. They got to take the leadership role, learn from each other, and Josh is a huge part of that. Right. Certainly they're on a watch list about those teams that could be a breakthrough. A lot of people are excited about Detroit just across the lake. In Cleveland, the Cavaliers are also dreaming big, and their team building includes the Canadian faction of top pick Anthony Bennett, uh, Tristan Thompson to go along with Kyrie Irving, the confident second-year man Deion Waiters among those listed here. Those are some talented rookies they're bringing in. However, it all begins with Uncle Drew. Oh, you got to stay healthy, kid. Um, well, you know, I just dedicate myself to this game um, and, you know, dedicate myself to my teammates. Uh, you know, they've been meeting me everywhere. You know, we've been working out together and, you know, we've been building a bond and, you know, chemistry coming into training camp. And, you know, I am the leader of this team and, um, you know, I'm taking full responsibility of it. You know, it's things I had to change within myself in order to, to be that leader and lead by example. And, uh, you know, now I have the, the respect of, of my peers and now we can get this thing started. Oh, Cleveland is hoping this is a big turnaround. The Browns may have righted the ship. The Indians are in the playoffs. How about the Cavs? Can, can they dream? Tell me about this team. Ben. Well, Mike Brown's going to bring more of a defensive mindset there, but great backcourt. Deion Waiters, mm -hmm. and especially Kyrie Irving, special players, the number one pick in the draft, but they're getting Verjao back. Mm -hmm. How healthy is Bynum going to be? C.J. Miles, Tristan Thompson, they should be very excited there. They're a team right there. Six, seven, eight in the East. They can be fighting for those positions there. That's how talented they are. Kyrie, Kyrie Irving can put teams on his back. He's that good at times, especially off the dribble. Somehow, can you keep buying them around 50, 60 yeah. games? We know Uncle Drew's going to be well. And all those other guys continue to improve their games. I think he's the key to how well the season they have. Buying them is the great mystery. Yeah. We'll, Unfortunately, we'll see how it health unfolds. Right. Yeah, health. Coming up on our Media Day recap, uh, running down some of the top tweets, uh, Benjamin Hockman of the Detroit, <laughs> or the Denver Post, rather, tweeting this with JaVale McGee. Please, media, ask me more questions. <laughs> Come on, oh, JaVale. Stop it, JaVale. You shacked the fool already. <laughs> 
News and notes on Media Monday, the NBA announcing Toronto, the great city of Toronto, will host the All-Star Weekend 2016. So <laughs> <laughs> Woody, option picked up by the Knicks for 14-15. Way to go, Woody. And the finals format reportedly ready to change from the 2-3-2 to 2-2-1-1-1. I like Good. it. I like it. I do. Not to mention the Trailblazers taking care of some business with their young players. Meanwhile, a reminder, 13 new head coaches in the league. That's nearly half the league. Let's hear from a couple right now. That's very exciting. This group uh, that we've put together, we all feel great about. A lot of good players individually, but I think collectively what they're, uh, what they're capable of, is we're, we're very excited about. And we can't wait to get started tomorrow. Well, our focus is just on competing daily and improving daily. And um, if you really make that your priority and your focus, then everything will play out and you'll feel good about where you end your season. But I think to, to talk about th those things or anything different than, than really our focus of just really competing, you know, in every drill and every practice, every game and uh, making daily improvement, you know, for individually and as, as a team a priority. If you do those things and you make that your focus, then uh, if, if, it's, if it's meant to be to advance and, and to, to move on, then that's what will happen. I can kind of compare the, the situation we're in here with when I was playing uh, with the Phoenix Suns back in the day and we made a trade for Kevin Johnson and, and Mark West, Tyrone Corbin. Uh, and then we signed Tom Chambers as a free agent, all-star player the next year, brought in Eddie Johnson, drafted Dan Marley, and all of a sudden we went from 28 to 55 wins. So um, I hope we can turn it around that fast in the next couple of years. But uh, you know, we're, we're kind of taking that same idea of it's possible. I think the good thing is uh, Ryan McDonough is bringing in guys that are going to work hard. Uh, they know that it, that's what it takes to get themselves to another level. I think everybody has to look at themselves and say, hey, look, you know, they're not all stars. So, uh, uh, you know, they, ha they, they need to work and, and work hard uh, every day at practice, even on their own. And, and uh, you know, guys that I have as, as assistant coaches with me and uh, Jerry Seastein and Kenny Gass and Mark West are all guys that, uh, you know, made it in the NBA because of their hard work and their selflessness of uh, playing as a team. And, and uh, yeah, that's what we expect from our players. And, and I think it'll rub off on them. And, and when we do that, uh, we'll win our fair share of games. Like I said, everyone's optimistic <laughs> uh, on media day. Uh, of these new coaches, uh, DZ, pick me out uh, one of these guys you feel may, could have a really good, solid impact right away. Well, I'm going to go with Brian Shaw out in Denver. I know George Carl did a heck of a job last year. He's not there. But Ty Lawson being a point guard, trying to take that next step of improving his game. Brian Shaw was a solid point guard when he played. Obviously, he has rings on his fingers being around the Lakers. So I think it could be a big impact on Ty Lawson. Have to look at Mike Brown in Cleveland. I mean, uh, defensive numbers aren't very good last year. 30th in the league in defensive field goal possessions. Mike will bring a defensive mindset there. And big thing is, Verajal is healthy. Mm -hmm. If Kyrie Irving can stay healthy, who knows what's going to happen with Andrew Bynum. But if he can be healthy, but I think Mike will bring a defensive mindset there. If they get their numbers up with Kyrie and Waiters and the guys they have, they can score the ball. Okay, we'll be back with some final thoughts here on our Media Day recap show. When we come back, We'll hear from Carmelo Anthony. Takes the mic in New York. Already questions about his contract status and the future already in New York. <laughs> when, when that time comes, I'll deal with that. Uh, I'm not going to go through the season uh, thinking about my contract. Uh, I'm actually under contract now, so I'm not, I'm not going to think about you know, whether I'm an opt out, whether I'm a reason, I'm not, I'm not doing that. When that time comes, I'll deal with it. Uh, and I, I told you, you know, when I saw you in this off season that I wasn't going to keep addressing that situation because there's, there's really no need to at this point. When, I, when that time comes, I'll deal with it. Until then, you know, my focus is really on, you know, being here, being a Nick, uh, doing what I have to do to, you know, hopefully win the championship. <laughs> As was the case in Miami, LeBron, uh, Wade, and Bosch asked about possibly opting out this summer. And in Los Angeles with the Lakers, Kobe in the last year of his contract, what's going to happen? Cap space out there. And now Carmelo Anthony was asked about possibly what's going to happen this summer. And maybe all of these things are entwined, but it's pretty amazing to me that that's the discussion on Media Day. And will it follow all of those players and, and teams around. It's unfortunate it has to be that way. You understand people have to do their jobs, but I think we've seen in the past if a guy's unhappy, 
He's, he goes to management earlier and he gets traded. I think if either Carmelo or LeBron opt out, they're going to opt out to stay to get more money <laughs> because that's what the business set up. I don't think it's going to be as a fiasco as we've seen in the past where they actually want to leave. Yeah, but the questions are out there and so are the answers and Melo gave it. Uh, Knicks, overall, give me the, the, your, your view of what's happening with them and, and how they will take it into this season. Tyson Chandler. You know, a former defensive player of the year, controls the paint for him. I like Bargnani, really stretches mm. the defense, but he has to stay healthy. No question Carmelo's as difficult covering the league as there is. J.R. Smith, they have a lot of tools, a lot of weapons. Raymond Felton at the point has to be a good distributor of the basketball. They got plenty of scoring. How are they going to guard? How healthy is Bargnani going to be? If those things can happen for them, they got a lot of weapons. There are quite a few variables in there. Yeah. Quite a few. You, <laughs> quite a few. But that's the case with uh, plenty of teams. Uh, this reminder, NBA TV kicking off preseason coverage on Saturday with three games at 9 a.m. Eastern, Oklahoma City and Istanbul, Turkey. Saturday night, Chicago at Indiana, hmm. followed by the Warriors and the Lakers. So basketball back, and we were so glad to be a part of Media Day. Mm. <laughs> That's going to do it for us. Vinny Del Negro, thanks for being in. Thanks for being here, guys. Come Appreciate back anytime. ACC, Appreciate it. Dennis Scott <laughs> Deasy, always good All to be with time, you. Man. I'm Vince Cellini. This was step one. The season is here. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Keep it right here on NBA TV.